2008. George W. Bush was president, the housing market collapsed, nearly destroyed the global economy, and a little movie came out called Iron Man. 13 years, 23 films, tens of billions of dollars, and one acquisition by Disney later, and you have the 2021 Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it today. The first three phases of the MCU are 2,999 minutes of the highest budget summer blockbuster hits. That number does include credits, but since almost all of these films have a stinger after the credits that links them to the other films in the MCU, they count. With the premiere of WandaVision on January 15th, 2021, we've officially entered phase four of the MCU. I'm gonna talk about the events of the first five episodes of WandaVision, but this spoiler warning, I'm going to caveat. If you have extensive MCU experience and have not seen WandaVision yet, this spoiler warning is mainly for you. Everyone else, unless you wanna go into the show completely blind, this is probably not as big of a deal. First question to ask is, does executive producer Kevin Feige expect that WandaVision viewers will have watched the entirety of the MCU going into WandaVision? The short answer is no. The show does enough with context clues and brief moments of exposition to help someone with limited MCU knowledge to make it an access point into the greater MCU. WandaVision starts by immersing the viewer in its sitcom facade. It spends almost three entire episodes completely contained within this fake show format. It does give plenty of hints that things are not quite as they seem. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But the show takes its time to explore the format and have a bit of fun before beginning to unravel the greater mysteries of the universe around it. I might have a better idea. Classic sitcoms did not ask that their viewers have much pre-existing knowledge of the characters and the plots of previous episodes. Instead, focusing on tropes and stereotypes is shorthand to the audience to help them understand relationships between characters. In classic sitcoms, characters also rarely experience true growth or change. The familiarity and the consistency was the appeal. Oh, Agnes, you're a lifesaver. Oh, uh, what kind of housewife would I be if I didn't have a gourmet meal for four just lying about the place? I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, I brought my pet rabbit for your magic act. <laughs> yes, of course. My kitchen window told me someone got a new and while modern sitcoms have allowed characters to grow or develop or change more than days past, yes, we're gonna get a dish rack and shower curtains and a cutting board. But if you think for one second I'm not also gonna get that marshmallow shooter so that I can shoot you in the face with marshmallows when you're asleep, then you're the dumbest woman I know. They still certainly aren't anywhere near the same level as serial dramas or films. But the absence of long character arcs and plot lines allowed sitcoms to have accessibility. You could pop in without much prior investment, hang out for 30 minutes for a couple of laughs, and then move on with your evening. The format, like quiz shows and procedurals, allowed for easy syndication because it didn't matter which season or episode was being aired. You always pretty much knew what you were getting into. And that's how WandaVision starts. Relying mainly on audience knowledge of the sitcom format instead of the MCU to subvert expectations and push the idea that things here are not all that they seem. I actually don't know what I'm doing here. I'm starting to feel that way myself. I'm Wanda. I'm, uh, Geraldine. The show subtly begins to reveal its mystery within the town and the true nature of the characters within it. I think it's important to note that both Wanda and Vision have undergone considerable growth for their time in the MCU, and that the characters at the start of WandaVision are decidedly not the characters they were when we last saw them in Infinity War and Endgame. These characters have allied, they've fought, they've fallen in love, they've sacrificed, they've resurrected, they were murdered, they were dusted, they recorporealized and avenged. All on the path to where we are today. You took everything from me. Going into the show, I know that at the end of Endgame, Vision is dead, Wanda is presumably still in good standing as a member of the Avengers having just reappeared to help defeat Thanos after being dusted five years earlier. But despite this complex and wild background that had me reading wikis and re-watching Age of Ultron, which is not a good movie, and large parts of Civil War, which is better, the show spends very little time with exposition of who the characters are and how they got there. 
And that's because unraveling the mystery of why Wanda is here and how Vision is alive is the mystery of the show. And this works from all angles. For those viewers who have watched the entirety of the MCU catalog, these are the main questions you have going in. But the show asks the same questions in the early episodes. The first question an MCU fan might ask is, when is this show set? The answer at the start is unclear. It's not until the fourth episode that we learn where in MCU chronology the show takes place. The show also tells us that Vision should be dead in the same episode. Look, I know it's been a crazy few years on this planet, but he's dead, right? Not blipped, dead. Not answering the question that people were familiar with the MCU are asking, but acknowledging that yes, this is a question that we are directly going to address as a core plotline of the show. What? I can't remember my life before Westview. I don't know who I am. I'm scared. By erasing Vision's memory, now he, along with the audience, must discover the truth about his own nature and the mystery of the town he finds himself trapped within. Someone who is as unclear on his own life and fate as the viewer who's never seen a movie with Vision before. So there's a moment at the end of episode five that blew my mind. There's a sitcom trope, a doorbell rings, the person outside is either an old character returning or an unexpected guest star. This trope was employed in WandaVision. A doorbell rings and Wanda answers it. The camera cuts to outside, looking in as she opens the door. A distinctive quaff appears in the foreground. It then cuts to his face and in classic sitcom fashion, the incorporeal studio audience cheers like an old series regular has returned for a guest appearance. He introduces himself and it cuts to Darcy who tells us the problem. Long lost bro get to squeeze his stinking sister to death or what? She recast Pietro? That this is not the Pietro known to the MCU. Pietro. And I loved this reveal. The trappings of an old sitcom trope, the meta layer with Darcy commenting on the strangeness of the moment. But suddenly WandaVision wasn't just drawing on the MCU or old sitcoms. They were asking for a greater meta layer of knowledge than anything I can think of in fiction, ever. Aaron Taylor Johnson played Wanda's brother Pietro in the MCU, and while he's never officially called Quicksilver, much like Wanda has never officially been called Scarlet Witch, that's who they are. He didn't see that coming. Evan Peters played Quicksilver in the X-Men franchise, first appearing in Days of Future Past. And while X-Men is a Marvel property like the Avengers, it's been isolated from the MCU because of Fox and Marvel's business deals. See, back in 2014 and 2015, when Days of Future Past and Age of Ultron came out, 20th Century Fox had exclusive rights to Marvel's X-Men franchise, and they did not seem keen on relinquishing that deal to the MCU. Famously, part of the deal between Fox and Marvel was that Fox had exclusive rights to the term mutant. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were both sort of Avengers properties and sort of X-Men properties. Marvel got away with using the characters by just never referring to them as mutants. Now these deals with Marvel weren't uncommon. Universal got Hulk, Sony got Spider-Man, and Fox got the X-Men, and Fantastic Four. But shortly after the MCU began, Disney acquired Marvel Entertainment and all of its properties. Now they were still bound to those previous studio deals, but in 2019, Disney made a play for 20th Century Fox. The deal was approved and X-Men were reunited with Marvel Entertainment. Okay, back to WandaVision. The show introduced a character from the X-Men franchise, and I lost my mind because not only do I know that Evan Peters played the same character as Aaron Taylor Johnson in a different cinematic universe, but I also know the business deals behind Disney, Marvel, and Fox that led to this happening. While I am getting ahead of myself, it's possible that WandaVision's Evan Peters is not the Pietro Maximoff from the X-Men franchise, but I don't think I would like that. There's enough recent and upcoming Marvel franchises that have invoked the multiverse I'm sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? That it makes it seem like this is the most likely explanation. It's also already a tough ask to expect viewers to have the knowledge of an entire cinematic universe before watching something. 
but for a show that is on its face accessible to viewers with limited knowledge of the MCU, suddenly having a moment where to get the most out of it, you need to know Disney's corporate machinations and an entirely separate cinematic universe, I think that's asking a little too much. Yes, they use a classic sitcom trope and a line of dialogue to highlight the importance of the character and the bizarreness of the moment, and yes, it blew my mind, and I can envision a path forward where the show explains who this new Pietro is and where he came from and merging the X-Men into the MCU. I think my issue is I shouldn't have to know the studio deals and acquisitions as a background for a fictional universe. Spider-Man just shows up in Civil War, and that's cool. This Pietro just shows up in WandaVision, which is also cool, and again, it blew me away. But I didn't like it. Overall though, the show is great and you should watch it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want updates on upcoming videos or just my general thoughts, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ScreenCheatem. And to end, we'll say those magic YouTube words. Please like and subscribe.